Well, um, this is a short history about what we have as tools in these last decades to try to diagnose female bladder outlet obstruction and also a glimpse on diagnosing the trusor performance. Um, most nomograms of female and male obstruction are only obstruction nomograms. They do not uh, consider the detrusor function, the detrusor performance. So uh, these nomograms you probably know of show only one face of the problem. Of course, that the detrusor performance, the bladder contraction, is more difficult to evaluate, and we'll see later on why. But indeed, it is a prominent factor in this uh, emptying or avoiding efficiency. Most pressure flow curves um, are support, supported by equations like this one. Um, do not take me wrong, this equation is uh, alpha between the Poise equation of fluid dynamics and the Bernoulli equation of uh, fluid dynamics. The difference is that it relates flow with a given constant K with pressure in the bladder and resistance elevated to a given potency. In the Poise case is elevated to the fourth potency and the Bernoulli equation, it's um, ele elevated to it the second, um, the second um, potency. The, the only thing I want to stress with that sort of equation is that flow is related linearly with pressure, but geometrically, if you want another mathematical term, non-mathematical term, um, and it, it's geometrically related to the radius. So the uh, section of the urethra is more important to uh, influence the flow than the pressure in the bladder. That's what they uh, meant by these equations, of course. Poise and um, Bernoulli were not um, related to bladders and urethras, but only reservoirs and outlets. By the way, Poise, uh, that you may know by your physics in the school or so, was in fact a doctor, medical doctor, but is known for everybody by his fluid dynamics equation. So, um, the message here is that our flow is influenced by these two uh, factors. Pressure, a bit. Resistance, a lot. Um, or, if you want, the pressure and the outlet section of the urethra. So, uh, if the emptying efficiency is a function of these two, the trusor and the urethra, Nomograms have to consider always flow and pressure. The second message is that um, when uh, we are in the emptying phase, what we call in urodynamics the truce of pressure is a misleading term because the truce of pressure has nothing to do, well, not nothing, but it's not a it's not a measure of the detrusor contractility. The detrusor pressure is the pressure that we can find inside our cavity of the bladder after a detrusor is contracting and after a urethra is opening. So the detrusor pressure is a function of not only the detrusor contractility, but also the urethral resistance. Unless, of course, we are contracting the detrusor against a closed urethra. Unless 
there is no flow, then, yes, the trusor pressure, and only in that case, the trusor pressure is a function of the trusor contractility. There are several uh, obstruction nomograms validated to the use in women. In um, 1987, uh, Dr. Blyvis and Axelrod found that those women with a detrusor pressure more than 20 centimeters of water and a flow of less than 12 mils per second could be uh, obstructed. In the next year, Massey and Polabrams found a similar, um, uh, a similar nomogram, but they raised the detrusor pressure to the 50 centimeters of water and um, also a flow of less than 12 mils per second. Chassaigne in 1998, uh, another, another figures, and Gary Lemack and Philippe Zimmern in 2000 uh, with another figures again. The message here is these are the same methodologies all of those were women populations, but these authors found slightly different um, boundaries of normality, slightly different statistical um, spread of pressure and flow. What I read from this is that the women population is very diverse, as I started to to, to talk, and um, if we take a women population with low urinary tract uh, symptoms, you'll find a normal boundaries, uh, given normal boundaries of PDAT and Q, but if you take a stress incontinence women population, we'll, you'll find different numbers, and if you have the chance of studying normal individuals, you would find other figures again. For those who are not very familiar with uh, pressure flow nomograms, um, they are approximately um, very similar. These very, too many names and authors, too many graphic arrangements, but they are mostly um, very similar. Some authors um, put the flow in the Y um, axis and the P that in the, um, in the X axis, in the horizontal axis. Some others did the reverse to fool us, but um, it's, it's about the same thing. What I need, it's a uh, two um, axis um, graphic um, relating the trusor pressure in centimeters of water with the resulting flow. Massey Abrams in 1988, what he found is, was that the, the women belonging to this square or this rectangle were obstructed and those were not. Then Axel Rodden Blyvus, a little bit before, uh, with different, different, more actual, uh, perhaps, but with, with different areas of boundaries of normality. Um, then again, Chassaigne was a little bit different, and Gary Lemack and Philippe Zimmern in 2000, um, a, little, a little bit different again. But all of them relate an area of possible obstruction with an area of no obstruction. We have no, nothing that uh, can lead us to the, the trusor function here. They are nomograms only for bladder outlet obstruction in women. And we never know what happens to those women with, say, 25 mils per second, 20, 25 mils per second um, of flow with, say, 100 centimeters of water of uh, PIDAT. These 
of eye pressure, eye flow are probably obstructed, but, but in these nomograms, we cannot be so sure about that. You probably know, at least the urologists here present, uh, you know the classical uh, Abrams Griffiths nomogram, um, formerly known as Abrams Griffiths nomogram. Now it, it is the ICS male nomogram for obstruction. And you probably know this. Um, you have the axis uh, Y and X axis reversed this. You have in the horizontal axis the flow and the pivot in the vertical um, axis, but it's absolutely the same thing. Um, we have an area of obstructed, an area of unobstructed, and an area of equivocal obstruction. This nomogram as well, as it's meant for males, uh, use um, only refers to obstruction, to urethral resistance. But you can superimpose those female nomograms of Massey Abrams or of Chassaigne or the Gary Lemack, superimpose them into this male nomogram. These areas I'm putting here are the validated obstruction female nomograms. You know, those three female nomograms. Of course, as expected, there is a little bit an invasion of some area, an, an invasion of the female nomograms in, onto the unobstructed area of the male nomogram. But that means that arrow, that invasion of the unobstructed area of the male nomograms means that they are, there are some women with pressure flow curves that were found to be obstructed, but if they were men, they wouldn't be obstructed. That's perfectly understandable because they have no prostate, and the message here is that the level of obstruction in men, the normal level of obstruction in men is not the same as in women. Urethral resistance, in women, the slightly urethral resistance means probably an obstruction, um, but in men, um, we, we, we accept more levels of urethral resistance, as you may understand. Again, the classical male nomogram, but the, the new thing here is that Werner Schaefer um, constructed this other one with um, the Q or the flow in vertical axis and uh, in horizontal the P that, but of course with a little abstraction or graphical uh, abstraction, you can interchange mentally one to uh, the other. But I did that work for you. And uh, for those who do not um, know uh, these, um, Schaefer's nomogram, he divided into seven areas of urethral resist resistance from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and to six. Urethral res resistance. But in this nomogram, and for reasons that we'll discuss later on, uh, for reasons that we'll discuss, discuss later on, he considers for the first time also the, the truser function related to the, um, the, to the uh, urethral obstruction. This particular nomogram from Schaefer was developed with the aid of my dear friend Ruth that just entered the room. So you have, for the first time, this double nomogram now, urethral resistance and of contractility. We'll come to that a little bit later. But if you want to superimpose that ICS nomogram uh, to the Schaefer's nomogram, and I did that uh, graphical work for you, it was just uh, putting that equivocal area onto the Schaefer's nomogram, you'll find that the equivocal area 
in for man is about between the first and the second level of Schaefer's nomogram. The zero is clearly unobstructed, and three or more uh, are the obstructed man. This. Superimposing now the former nomograms validated for, for women, the Massey Abrams, the Chassagne, the Gary Lamac, superimposed uh, upon the male Schaefer's nomogram of obstruction and the trusor contractility, you can find that most women are considered to be obstructed if they have not more than three, but probably more than one grade of Schaefer's nomogram. Or it was the same thing to say that we can use the very same graphic of Schaefer's nomogram to impose these boundaries, um, um, boundaries of obstruction of more than zero. This red area would be obstruction for women, and only that um, white area would be of non-obstruction. And this relying on the ancient data of Chassain, Lamac, and uh, Paul Abrams, and Massey. Then in 2000, Asnet Grouts and um, Blavers, Jerry Blavers, um, for some reason they, they found that um, intubated flows, and when it, we are relating the flow with the pressure, that flow is an intubated flow, not a free flow. Um, and they used catheters of more than seven French, and they realized that these catheters could have in women an obstructive effect. So it tr they tried to relate the flow in the horizontal axis, but not the intubated flow, but the free flow. That's why you have an FQ, it's free flow without intubation. It's measured on a previous Euroflowmetry before the systometry and the PIDAT max. And he found this nomogram constructed, constructed upon a free flow of one micturition related to the detrusive the pressure of another micturition. Um, Nowadays, it was published this obstruction coefficient index um, that is a line. Um, it was called the OCO1, the obstruction coefficient 1 for men. That means that um, in a given population, the PIDAT max, um, uh, the PIDAT max was related to the double of Q max plus 40. It's that blue line it would be the boundary in that particular population of males, the boundary between the non-obstructed and the obstructed um, man. If you superimpose the female Blavis Grout's nomogram, I had to turn it um, 90 degrees uh, to, to, to turn in 90 degrees to put the flow uh, related to the flow of, of the Schaefer's nomogram and the PIDAT in the horizontal axis for both. Otherwise, they could not be graphically uh, understood. You can find that that um, green, uh, light green area of non-obstruction for females corresponds roughly to the zero grade of Schaefer. The equivocal or mild obstruction of Blyvus grouts is the, the, dark, uh, the dark green means about the uh, one uh, grade of Schaefer and the, and the obstructed areas of Blyvus grouts are the plus two um, grades of Schaefer. So it's completely, um, they are not comparable because the flows are different, but they are very superimposable. These two validated female and male nomograms, 
The difference is that uh, the grades for uh, the boundaries for obstruction are a little bit different. Um, why I do not use the blyvis grout nomogram? Because uh, for me, it's an, ad an advantage to using free flow, a free flow from one micturition and that detrusive pressure of another micturition. So we are not uh, relating these two parameters of a single voiding, but of different, two different voidings. Um, after, in the first definition, he used not the detrusor, the, the, the detrusor pressure, the maximum detrusor pressure, and the Schaefer nomogram uses the detrusor pressure on the maximum flow, the P that Q max instead of the P that max. I'll show you graphically that it's not the same thing. Sorry? Yes, that's the problem. They have two voidings. They use a free flow with only flow measuring, only the flow measuring, and they put it in the nomogram in the axis of the flow. And then another voiding, intubated voiding, when they measure the detrusive pressure. So the detrusive pressure and the flow are not measured in the same emptying phase, in the same voiding. For me, that's a flaw. Some others can think otherwise, but for me, that's a flaw. They claim that using PIDAT max, or the, the, the maximum detrusive pressure during the micturition, or the detrusive pressure on the maximum flow, they claim that these um, pressure parameters are statistically similar in a given population. They might be uh, right, but in the individual patient, it's not that so. First of all, um, is it necessary to use this artificial free flow thing? Um, maybe it is with, with catheters of more than seven French, but nowadays, as you may know, we use catheters of less than five French. And some people have um, described that there is no obstructive effect on w with the use of these catheters, more thinner catheters than they used, uh, blevis grouts they used in 2000. The problem with PDAT max and PDAT Q max, they are different. If you have a PDAT max very close to the PDAT Q max, it's not a problem. You have the blivus grouts, two cases, if the, the same case, the same patient, but if you use the PDAT max and if you use the PDAT Q max, you'll find these patients in the very same non obstructed light blue area. But sometimes the um, detrusive pressure at maximum flow is not the maximum detrusive pressure during that emptying. And just, um, we have to remind, per, just for instance, the post-contractions that many women have. And if they, this value of PDAT max is very different from PDAT Q max, this very, this very um, emptying phase, it's the same patient and you read differently using this um, nomogram of Blyvus, depending on if you use PDAT Q max or PDAT max. All other nomograms use PDAT Q max. So I think um, I'm very uncomfortable using PDAT max in some patients. I have to exclude a lot of patients when the PDAT max and the PDAT Q max are very different. And I don't want to exclude too many pa patients when I use a nomogram, please. Sorry, I have. Yes, um, I am sorry to call it an after contraction because most often it's not a, a true contraction after the voiding contraction. 
is most often a premature closing of the urethra and the rising of the pivot. So it seems like an after contraction, and, and it may not be. It's not that simple to diagnose an after contraction. But the fact is that for one of those reasons, or after contraction, or premature closing of the urethra, you may have pudat max uh, I above the pudat Q max. And the bladder might be empty, yes. Of course. But if you use the nomogram, you'll find completely different results using one or the other parameters. So I think we have to stick on the PIDAT-Q max. And I believe that most um, computer um, programs that are in use in urodynamic apparatus using the um, blivus grouts nomograms are using now PIDAT-Q max. I don't know if it is with their agreement or not. So, um, to, to wrap up, and before I introduce Professor Paolo, uh, what should be the ideal features for a pressure flow nomogram for females? Well, it should be, of course, built after a female series, including, and that's quite difficult, including normal controls. Most of studies include uh, people that have to perform uh, pressure flow studies not because of uh, lower urinary, urinary tract dysfunction but because of um, uh, urinary incontinence, uh, stress incontinence, and they, they are used as sham or a, as normal controls. The pressure flow nomogram should assess both pressure and flow in the same voiding. In, in the same voiding, not like blivus grotz nomogram, but we have to use small enough catheters with negligible uh, obstructive effect on the urethra. In my practice, I can achieve this with less than five French uh, catheters, and commercially, they are very uh, simple to, to, to find. Most often, I use um, four French or three and a half French um, pediatric or neonatology catheters for esophageal catheters, and I use two, one for filling, one for measuring. And in the voiding phase, I take one, the, the, the filling catheter, and I um, leave in the urethra only one 3.5. French catheter, and uh, in a large series, we cannot find any obstructive effect, effect on the urethra, so there is no more point on using free flows of another micturition in a nomogram of the trusor pressure of another voiding. A scale for the trusor contractility, so not be stuck only on obstruction, and have a scale. The term scale is not, is not by chance. Um, maybe we should not have, for women, a scale of normality like Schaefer's do uh, for men. A, a very weak, weak minus, weak plus, normal minus, uh, very strong. Because there are so diverse voidings in women that maybe we should have a numeric scale instead of being stuck to um, diagnostic, diagnostic terms like uh, very weak or weak minus or so. And of course, uh, it should be independent of the abdominal influence. Um, that's the problem. Um, when we use the trusa pressure nomograms, we are not taking into account um, the abdominal influence into the female voiding. And if we have no concern in asking patients not to strain, um, we find more than one-third of voidings with that abdominal contamination. And this abdominal influence or abdominal contamination prevents us to interpret a PIDAT-Q or a, the trusor pressure 
um, flow, a pressure flow curve. What could be the um, answer to this problem? Using a nomogram, using the vesicle pressure, which is the sum of the trusor pressure and the abdominal pressure, and the um, and Q. So it was not a PVAT Q, but a PVAS uh, Q nomogram. But it's still under construction, I believe. Such nomogram is n still not available or validated for women. So in the meanwhile, um, I think we have to uh, rest the diagnosis of obstruction in uh, other methods other than pressure flow curves, like we saw earlier, video urodynamics or ultrasound or EMG. But, and the thesis for today is that the usage of these male nomograms like Schaefer's nomogram with some adjustments and with the understanding of some limitations for the use in women may prove clinically useful. In the meanwhile, let me present you Professor Paulo Rodrigues from uh, Brazil and to present uh, his view on post-operative obstruction in women. Can I ask you one question? Um, is there a reason why you avoid mentioning pelvic floor muscle function? I see somebody talking about the neurological uh, examination and talk about underactivity or no activity. Is there a reason why you avoid the whole role of the pelvic floor musculature? I'm a bit confused. No, I, I, I do not avoid. I, you mean in causes for obstruction? For obstruction yes. yes. Um, no, uh, um, but, but in the urethral causes, we know that some functional obstruction might come from the cervical muscle, the intrinsic sphincteric muscle, or to the all muscles around the urethra. Is, is described a new type of dyssynergia, is the pelvic vesicle dyssynergia. People that can contract the detrusor but cannot relax their periurethral muscles. So when we um, speak about um, urethral obstruction is uh, independently of what muscle is producing the obstruction, but, but of course it's an important thing to remember that it's not only the intrinsic uh, muscles that can cause this outlet obstruction, the extrinsic muscle as well. Is that your point? Uh, working, on, ooh, working on the normogram for women, I really urge you to, to include the pelvic floor muscle function. And you can imagine I'm a pelvic floor physiotherapist, that's but obvious. But no nomogram, no nomogram will ever give you the real cause of obstruction. No, I know. We need the nomograms to diagnose if there is or there is not obstruction. The cause of obstruction. Okay. In a nomogram, I cannot distinguish between a cervical obstruction and in strength, intrinsic distal sphincter obstruction, a pelvic floor um, periurethral muscles obstruction. What I diagnose is obstruction. Yeah. I can not even diagnose between functional and anatomical obstruction. I cannot distinguish in man between a benign hyperplasia of, of his prostate or a stenosis of urethra. So the cause, the real cause of obstruction is another mustard. Yeah, but that's why an, an EMG measurement could help uh, to support the ideas how obstructions can be solved in the future. EMG, to my view, is very good. Well, it's not good for it. Well, it's good to distinguish between functional and anatomical obstruction. Even though with a pelvic contact EMG, I can ask, distinguish between intrinsic sphincter dyssynergia or pelvic muscle Synergies. Sorry. Sakaki Bell from Japan. And, and I will give you one ex exam ex uh, example. Previously, we have studied some neurological patients with DSD, the truth of speaking, the dysthenia. And the patients with DSD ha had uh, showed show the increase. Uh, 
a, a, some sort of obstruction by surface nomograms, but the degree is not so not so obvious bit, um, as compared with the um, prostate hyperplasia because prostate hyperplasia the grade of obstruction go, goes up to, um, such as f three or four grades by Schiffer's nomogram. But uh, the, for patients with DSD, the grade is one or two. So small but uh, significant um, obstruction they have, they have had. Uh, and they, they are uh, improved by the, um, some um, um, drug therapies. So. Uh, can I include another notion? Uh, to my view, the Truser uh, dysnergias have different levels of obstruction in the same voiding, unlike BPH patients. Ruth. Louis, I'm, I came too late, so maybe that I uh, put the Very wrong question. Very welcome, as always. <laughs> but uh, uh, the thing is, you focus on the truser, and that's, of course, what we are used to do in male. But we all know that the um, flow in, uh, um, in a women can be also modified by abdominal pressure and by the pelvic floor. So is it also a possibility that we shouldn't look at the truser but also on vesicle pressure? Yes, I just um, I came to, to say that. Maybe we can um, start to think on nomograms not using PVAT but PVAS. That is the sum of abdominal pressure and, and, and uh, the truser pressure. Uh, th that could be an um, option not to eliminate one third the females uh, out of these nomograms, of course. But you are working on that, aren't you? Yes, we should work <laughs> together. But you weren't in Bristol. <laughs> Hi, this is Christina Naran Horti from Madrid, Spain. Uh, I think the, the, um, the, uh, the point of view of the physiotherapist, I, I'm the person who made the Eurodynamic in my hospital, so I'm physiotherapist too. We use a lot the EMG and the abdominal pressure in women because women biomechanical is not the same than the men. So you have a lot of, uh, a lot of women uh, with surgery, with, um, with uh, going from one urologist to another urologist, and the problem is the muscles, but not the intrinsical, not the urethral, not the rhabdo sphincter. We are talking about that if you have an activation of the pelvic floor of muscles, you have an underactivity, of course, and this woman make a pressure with the abdominal muscles and um, for the micturation. So there is a problem that you can, uh, that is needed to, to have in the urodynamics really, really clear that these muscles are working and they are not working alone. So I think this is the, the, the controversial here, is to uh, take into account when you are making the urodynamics and not only to see the nomogram, because if you only see the nomogram, you forget all the pelvic floor muscles. Absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, as I just told, uh, the no these nomograms can diagnose for you the mechanical properties of this reservoir and the outlet, they do not give you the diagnosis of the dysfunction. They do not give you what is the cause or the muscle implied in the cause of the functional obstruction. Of course. We have, we have some minutes in the... In the, in the in the end of the, uh, the course yeah. for discussion. Just but quick. anyway, if you feel that it's more... Um, yeah, just quickly, I think it's important to know what the abdominal component is, but in practical terms, this is when I do the test, often when the posture is changed from the supine to the sitting, the abdominal graph falls down. And so, it becomes inaccurate. Do you know what I'm? Saying? Yes. Yeah. But uh, that, that's wh why we call it the abdominal contamination. When there is, and that's why we always produce pressure flow curves with the pressure sound in the rectum, because we have rectum. desperately we need to know if there is or there is not any abdominal um, influence on the micturition, and if there is. 
we cannot use PDATQ pressure flow curves. Mm -hmm. We'll come to that later.